All right, here we are for part two. I, I recovered from that cordis crash, and here's where we left off. We had derived this one hertz clock. We made the schematic. We'd run a functional simulation, which basically only proved that our divide by five was working. Like I said, we couldn't catch pins to these different segments, but we're not going to be able to use the university vector waveform to show that 50 million clock cycles result in one clock cycle. Since we've then verified the divide by five works, the divide by 10, and we basically checked our maths. We go through here, right, dividing this down. We should just be able to program this to the board and see our one hertz signal. What I'd like to do now is make a couple changes here. I'm going to detach this pin. We're going to use this for output, but let's capture then each one of these signals. So what I'll do is rename this pin. So our input clock is called reference clock. I'm just going to call this clock, and I'm going to say six dot dot zero. I'm going to make a bus, and we're going to capture each one of these output signals here. All right, so if we make a bus here, right, by saying dot dot, that made it a bus. If I draw a wire out, notice it's thick, it's a bus line. So I just want to continue then this bus line down. And why is I think I choose the bus tool and then don't get it? All right, so let's continue this bus line down here. Um, we're going to get rid of this output as well. And delete that pin. All right. So what I'd like to do is I'm just going to you now single wire tool. I'm going to then connect this single wire tool. I want to connect one wire to this bus. And then I have to name it. So this is going to be then clock six, All right, bit six here. And this one, well, why I can't connect to that is beyond me. like the way this is looking, clock five. I like the fact that Cordis lit that whole thing up in blue. I'm expecting an error at some point. Clock four. We want to cap so what I'm doing is capturing all these individual signals. But if we want to capture with a name the various names, we could put seven different output pins on here to capture those. I'd rather just have one out bus output from my circuit. Should, should get clock two, bit two of the bus or wire two, hundred hertz. And missed one. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero should be my one hertz. So what did I? Ten. Okay. I'm gonna have to make that seven to zero. Zero is my one hertz. Two. Should count a little more carefully. I'll have to adjust all of these now. It should be three. Let's 
four. Fifty divided by five, 50, 10 megahertz, 10 megahertz divided by 10 should give me one megahertz. So one million divided by 10 gives me 100,000. 100,000 divided by 10 gives us 10,000. 10,000 divided by 10 gives us 1,000. 1,000 divided by 10 gives us 100. 100 divided by 10 gives us 10. And 10 divided by 10 gives us one. All right, me then, all right, I've got to fix that. So, so six down to zero. Seven dot dot zero. If I want to capture all of those, all right, we don't have to capture all of those, but I just thought I'd show you how you can do that with a bus. All right, sometimes then when you're making a clock for other systems, you want to capture just one output. Sometimes you want to capture several in case you to allow yourself to use these other frequencies. So let's see if we can run analysis and synthesis on this without any errors now. Now I'm going to make a symbol out of this. So create update, create symbol files from current file. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll call that my one hertz. All right. Now let's create a top level or hardware level. So file new block diagram schematic. All right, this is going to be our hardware level. We're going to put this, I'm going to put it in this example on an Altera DE2 board. First I'm going to insert the symbol that we just made. Right, there's my one hertz clock. blow that up a little bigger. All right, so now I'm going to need an input pin for the clock and input for reset. And I'll put a pin here to grab this. All right, so if I wire that to a bus, it made a single wire, and I want this to be a bus wire. So control Z to undo, let me just name this, all right, same thing. Clock bracket seven dot dot zero bracket. All right, all right now we get a bus. I'm going to use one of the push buttons. I use the key zero push button, key bracket zero, right, for the reset on the hardware level. And then the system clock name, actually all caps, clock underscore 50. All right. Now, I need to go back over here since I auto-selected, I need to go ahead and select the DE2 chip. It's part of the Cyclone 2 family. Uh, in the course device settings that you were given for the class I teach, you would have this setting, but if you FPGA 672 speed grade six, it's this particular chip, the EP2C35F672C6 chip. So we could say okay. Now that that's part of our design, we also need to import pin assignments. We could assign them manually. Oh, I'm not quite done yet. All right? Notice that this is not an output hardware name. For right now, let's just maybe show the clock signal on one of our LEDs. So let me add another output pin here. And 
if I show this on red LED zero, LED R zero, we should see this pulsing clock of on or off for about one second. All right. And I need to set, once again, I got a bi-directional pin. I don't know why I'm doing that lately. Output, I need output. All right, red LED zero, so LED R bracket zero. All right, and I wanna to tie to this, my one hertz signal coming out of this bus then is clock at index zero, the way I wired that up, so clock at index zero. All right, that wire then is my one hertz signal. All right, so now we've got some hardware, board hardware to see that on as well. Let's save this. I'll call this hardware level. And I need to make that the top level. Now assignments, I need, I'm gonna port my pin assignments rather than manually assign them. There we go. Got folders in multiple places. Here's one on my desktop, Core to settings file, um, D2, so D2 QSF, okay. Notice my pin name showed up, right? And it recognized clock underscore 50. If I go to assignments and go to pin planner, and we bring this up, all right. Here are my local signals. All right, those are always shown in the design. Here are the hardware names. So even though we're not using them since I imported all the pins, right, they're all here. So it says direction unknown simply because I'm not using these pins. But if we were to scroll down to the clock signal, there's all my red and green LEDs. Notice then we have two clocks. Clock underscore 50 is the one I chose because we're using the main 50 megahertz clock. We're dividing that down to one hertz. So if you ever want to know what a signal name is, uh, you can open up that QSF file, or if you've already imported your pins, you can always go straight into here, the pin planner, and see what the hardware names are, in case you forget what those names are. All right, now, pins are imported. The last thing we have to do is we have to do a full compilation before we can program the board. I've already plugged the board. <laughs> into my computer, powered it on. Just wait for the compilation to finish before we can program the board. And that's my dog in the background who heard a noise he didn't like outside. Okay, 435 warnings. That looks terrible, but a lot of those warnings relate to the unused pins. Let's take a quick look. Parallel compilation, that's fine. Logic box. Fine. Ignored locations or region assignments for the following pins. So if you were to open this up, it would show all these pins here we're not using. Those are okay. It's okay following nine output pins without capacitance. So all of, okay, so we don't have any critical warnings that are going to cause us issues. I'm going, we can go to tools programmer or go to the programmer icon here. All right, it's already recognized the USB blaster on my machine so I don't have to add any hardware. It's already recognized my file as well and my chip so I'm just going to hit start to program the board. And let me turn on the video camera.
Yeah, yeah. It's got a bright background. And still start up the video. All right. All right. I've chosen the wrong thing. Got a bright light behind me. But what you can see are, for some reason, LED 1 and 0 are both flashing. I'm not quite sure why. I wanted 0 to be flashing. Not quite sure why 1 is. Don't think we have that in our design. But what you can see is that looks like it's on for about 1 second, off for about 1 second. So a 1 hertz clock. Right, actually, one hertz clock should be on for about half the time, off for about half a second. And so we see the on off time cycling through here. All right. Now, let's see if we can. I'm not really quite sure why it decided to turn on the red LED as well. Oh, we didn't, I didn't try the reset. And trying to get the video back. All right. Other thing I didn't do all right, is here, if you really can't see, if you press key one, as long as I hold that down, I'm resetting the circuit. None of the LEDs are on. As soon as I let it go, the circuit starts running again. All right, so our reset button is working as well. Yeah, like I said, I'm not really sure why I decided to turn on LED red one on my board. A mystery for another day. All right, that's it for getting our one hertz clock running. All right, uh, in another part of this video, we're actually take in part three, we'll actually go ahead and see if we can. Uh, actually, it'll be another video tutorial where we grab this clock signal and we start running a counter to the board. So we're going to feed it into a counter and start counting off seconds and show those on the seven segment display. So that will be the next video tutorial.